Well, it's been some time since we've made a video, so I was getting ready to uh, put this thing together, and the last step of this was uh, creating some feathers for his headdress, which I made uh, the other day. Get them in around here. These here, but I'm not really satisfied with the way they turned out. So we're going to make some new ones. All right, what is this piece here is what's happening is he's got a, a bear claw necklace on. And let's see here. I've got all the teeth here for the necklace. Got them all numbered. You see the little numbers on them to where they're going to go go on later, but I can't put them on. I have to paint them individually away from the figure and put them on after the figure's finished. Of course, I can't put them on now. I would, it, painting the figure would really be hard to do with these uh, teeth blocking areas around the, the lower part of the figure. I don't know what that guy's up to. Cedar Homes must be something coming down the road. Anyway, those are done. Here's the uh, extra blanks I cut out for the feathers. Uh, hang on here a minute. Yep, there it goes down the hill. <laughs> Judy missed the shot. I, I, Probably. Anyway, we get lots of mobile homes transiting our road out here, heading up farther down. Anyway. Forget that. What else? There's, there's a. Here comes another one. I'll bet you it's the other half. Maybe. Nope. No. You gotta put those back in there so I don't lose them. Put that nope, there. Just a color. There is a. going to be some additional decorations on here. These will go in after they're painted. I haven't decided what uh, colors to use, but these will go into the piece after it's painted, and we'll be doing a video on uh, painting this after we do this feather video. So I'm just showing you. Yeah, let me stay in there. There it comes. Put these things together over here. So anyway, what I thought I'd do is just show you how I go and make my feathers. All right, first thing I do is cut out the blank for the feather. So I've cut out some blanks here, and I'll show you how I do this over at my saw. The important thing when laying out these feathers Feathers have a curve to them. You can see here how it's curved. So you want that curve. See how I curved these here? Because by curving them like that, instead of going straight out like that, you know, that would look kind of odd if it went straight out. They'd be way to hell out here and it just wouldn't look good. But by curving them, it makes it look a lot better, but it also kind of hugs the piece, which you know brings everything together. See how, see how the feathers just tie into the piece? That's what you want. You don't want some extraneous thing sticking out here that pulls the, the viewer's uh, vision off to the side. And that's what happens when, if this thing was going out here. You want everything to be concentrated basically in this area right here. That way he get, you get the face, you get the body, you get the feathers. Everything goes right here. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see a whole bunch of something going on out here which is pulling you off in that direction. So that curve is a natural thing, but artistically it works to your benefit if you do the same thing on your piece. Okay? That's just my opinion. But it's a lot of other people's opinions too. So anyway, let's go carve a blank 
then I'll show you how to lay it out, all right? Okay, I didn't mean let's go carve a feather. I meant let's go cut out a feather blank, okay? So, all right, here's my piece of wood. This is a little over about an inch and a half. So when you're carving your blank, remember you're going to take away material. So you want to start with a piece that uh, is about that, that thick. That might look thick for a feather, but believe me, by the time we carve it down, it will be okay. So, one of the things you want to make sure of is you want that grain to go this direction here. Because this is your quill. This will be the quill, ending of the quill. And then it'll curve out here, like this. Okay? And uh, when we're carving the, the details on the feather, although we will make the feather look thin, it's actually going to be kind of thick. Because we want, we want the strength of the thickness down in this area here, where it, it's aiming toward a cross grain. Otherwise, it's going to be weak. But if we're careful and we do it correctly, it's not going to be that weak. All right? So I'm going to cut that out. This will be a little bit noisy. Oh my God, down. Now, on my blade, I always tell people the best blade you can get is this skip tooth blade from, uh, oh, what's the name of that? Can't think of the name of it. It's got a wolf. Wolfing the thing. When you get old, you start for <laughs> forgetting stuff, and it's it's hard to. Frustrating. Yeah, frustrating. Judy says, believe me, it's frustrating. Timber Wolf is the name of the company Yay. that makes these blades. Anyway, it, it's a three three sixteenths inch skip tooth bandsaw blade from Timber Wolf, and if. Uh, they don't have your sides exactly in their catalog. They will make you one. And you can't beat it. This thing, I use it for everything. Cutting my bases, it just zips through everything. Now this one's been on there for a long, long time. And I, every time I get up here to cut something with it, I think it, it, today's going to be the day that it finally breaks. Mm -hmm. They will break, but these blades last an awful long time. So anyway, I'm going to cut this out. There you go. So now we've got the strength up here where the quill's going to be. And we've got the thickness down here we need to make this strong after we carve it. All right, so let's head okay, back over, back over here at the workbench. First thing we want to do is put on our protection. Because I don't like getting cut, and I never have gotten cut, so I don't plan on getting cut. Okay, like I said now, here's the grain right here at the end that the quill's going on. Right there. And down here, the grain is running about like that. So it goes from straight up here to about like that down there. So, the first thing I do is carve the inside of the feather. I don't, I don't worry, I don't worry about cut, cutting the shape of the feather yet. I just want to carve the inside of it. And then we'll carve the outside of it. And then we'll shape it. It's just like doing a, the figure. You want to prepare the canvas before you add the paint. So we're going to, when you're carving a figure, you want to prepare the canvas before you add the paint. And I don't have a, well, here's a, here's a little figure. We've sort of reached the canvas, <coughs> say, <coughs> preparing the canvas. Now it's we can start adding the details. That's what I'm doing now, is adding the detail to the face. But I don't want to do that until all the facial structure is in place for that. It, a lot of people, they jump to the details before they really finish the, the, the main part to get it correct. 
and it just never seems to turn out. So take your time, get everything set up for the details, and then do the details the last thing. And that's what we're going to do here. So, with the grain going across like this now, I can't carve this direction or it'd go right through the piece and snap it off. So I have to come down through the other to where you watch your chips fall off of it. So we're just going to start right now. So holding that down there, I'm just going to roll Now this piece is not the best piece of basswood. It's just a scrap piece that I picked out over in my cutoff box. And it's also kind of hard because it's been sitting out in my cold garage off of my shop for the last several years and I bought a bunch of that great Heineke basswood I think back in 2019 before the at the last Dayton show whenever that was 2019-2018 I bought a bunch because I knew the Dayton show was going to stop and I wanted to get some basswood. And I had a great, I still have a, quite a stock out there, but uh, for some reason storing it out there, it got hard. And I hate hard basswood. So anyway, okay, this is what we want right there, okay? So now on the other side, we're going to car carve the opposite direction because chips are going to come off like this. Yet on this side, remember, they came off like that. So we just start here. And another thing I forgot to tell you. See how this is dished, the feathers dished? All right, well, we did the same thing on this side of the feather. So you turn the feather over, it's dished, or not dished, it's curved the other opposite, other direction. So that's what we're doing on this side, all right? Because this basswood is not soft, it's not that fun to do. I had a good soft piece of new basswood from Heineke, Heineke's, I wouldn't be fighting it like I am right now. Well, that's all right. It's just taking a little bit longer than it normally would. I'm just getting the surface roughed out here. Okay, so, oops, there's a spot there that can be fixed. All right, now looking at our feather. Here's the quill, right down here. So we want to, we want that feather to come down at an angle. And feathers always end indifferently. I'll get my book here, I'll show you. Find the right feather. Kind of hard to find it with all this stuff on my finger. This is a great book, Focus on Feathers. A friend of mine gave that to me and I use it all the time. There we go, this is the best one. Now these have all been trimmed to where they look exactly the same. 
And I just, as I said, these are golden eagle feathers. Oh, up until when I started carving, you know, I never really researched much. But uh, I was always in the, under the assumption that these feathers were from the American bald eagle. Well, it, they aren't. They're from the golden eagle. So I just learned that and I started carving, doing research. So anyway, that's what we're doing. And feathers, they always, they, they don't have the same shape as it goes along the wing of the, of the eagle. Here's another one. So either they have different shapes. That's what makes them beautiful. So, what we do is we carve the feather. And as I'm Carving each individual feather, I try to make it just a little bit different than the one before. Because the Native Americans didn't have access to perfect, perfect turkey feathers, which is what those feathers are probably made from, most of them, because it's against the law now to, uh, if you're a non-Native American, to use the actual feathers of the golden eagle. You get arrested and it's thrown in the slammer. Just carving the quill out here. That's not perfect. See how this side curves more than this side here? That's fine. I like that. Okay, now what we're going to do, carving towards ourselves. Remember, always take into consideration the grain. You can't do it this way. you got to do it this way. That's just the way it is. See, by carving that edge thin, it's going to make the feather look thin when it's really not. I can turn it around and carve this way up at this end because it's matching up with the grain if I do that.
little sharp point here on the end, but just a little point there. Okay, now we can go ahead and continue rounding the top. over here. Okay, we've got that. So, feathers, some of the details on a feather. They have little splits, splits in the end, like that one right there. But we're going to put a few splits on our feather here. So, just carve in like that. We don't want to go overboard, we just want to indicate a few details around that area right there. There we go. Got a feather. Okay. Looks pretty good. It doesn't look thick now. It just uh, because the way we did it. See, it's thin looking. Although in the center here, it's actually quite thick. And when you do your feather, the last thing you want to do is make sure it doesn't overpower your figure. So that looks pretty. That looks pretty good. I think you could you could have one feather, although that I don't think that's very very good in my composition. Comp, composition. I just don't like that. I like I like feathers to be relaxed, and in doing that, uh, sometimes I will bring. Show you here. Bring the I use three feathers normally. Why? Because I like three feathers. Okay, it's, it's part of a good composition. I think I could use two. I could use one, but I like three, so I use three. I bring those down, and the bottom one hits the body of the Indian, and in doing that, it adds strength to the piece. Here and resting against this down here. It's not going to break. It's strong, even though the ends of these feathers are pretty weak. But they're just not going to break unless someone really does something drastic with them. Okay? So there, we've got our feather. Now we're going to work on the next step of creating it. As soon as I get that burr off of there. No. 
and I'm going to thin it down just a little more. Thinner you get it. Can't see. The thinner you get it, the better it looks. Okay? Looks good. So now the next step is to create the quills, or the sides of the feather. You have the quill, and then you've got the rest of the figure. And this is what we're going to do now, is we're going to create some detail on these sides of the feather going up. Okay? That's what we're going to do right now. And to do that, we have to shift over to the paint table. Which was okay, I'm over here at the Sandiflex wheel. I use this thing to sand just about everything I do in this shop. And I'm going to do it to this feather, too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to round this area right here, get it nice and smooth, and I'm going to take off the sharp edges of the carving strokes. and pointed and we smooth this both surfaces so now we'll head over to the paint okay table. over here at the paint, ta paint table I got my feather here now t to texture this feather I'm going to use this uh, acrylic modeling paste you can get this down at Hobby Lobby or uh, any art art store Michaels or I don't think you could find it at Walmart or a place like that, but I know you can get it at Hobby Lobby. This cost me $12.99, and uh, I'm sure it costs more now. But anyway, if you take care of this stuff, you don't use very much of it when you're doing the stuff that I do with it. So it will last a long time if you take a few steps, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, here we go, and there it is. Pretty thick stuff. It's like real thick white paint, but it's a modeling paste. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to take our feather and we're going to dip it in the water, some clean water here, just like that. Set that down there. We'll let that water soak into it. Get me a brush here. soaked in it loses the shiny surface so now it's soaked in see how the surface is dull so that's what you want you don't want to do it when uh, when it's wet really wet but you do want to get it what you know you do want a damp feather to do this technique on okay so then you dip down in here and you get you a big bunch of, of the modeling paste and you just paint your feather Lay it on there, not real thick, but not real thin either. I'm going to do one side at a time. Okay, and then we're going to take our brush and we do this to it. Now see, just doing that, I 
almost creates the texture of the feather, but not quite. That's kind of ugly. That's pretty heavy, so we're not want, we don't want that. We're going to do we're going to even that out again. Okay, like that. And then we're going to get us a clean toothpick. Look for the skinniest end, which is right there. I'm going to get that wet too. And we're going to do one side of the feather at a time. Just loose, loosely hold your toothpick as you do this. If you make a mistake or overlap the detail too much on one side. You can go back and do it again. Because this stuff you can move it around pretty easily. And then take your toothpick and run it down with the feather. That's all I do for the quill. People will say, well, how come you don't carve a quill on there? Well, I just don't. I don't think it's necessary. And the technique that I use here, it emphasizes that there is a quill there. And that's all you need, as far as I'm concerned. Don't listen to what other people say. Do what you want to do. Keep it fun. Okay? So there. You have one side done. And I always look at it. Sometimes you get a little ball of stuff. And I try to get rid of it. Okay? So now we're going to rotate it over. While my brush is wet, I'm just going to paint this again. Let it soak in. And go down in there and get me another big dollop of it. I think I got a little too much that time. Careful you don't mess up the other side. Alright. I'll dip my teeth back in there again. And here we go. Do the 
same thing over again. It takes a little practice and a lot of confidence in doing this stuff. But if you do it over and over and over, you build up, you build up confidence and then it all just seems to come natural. Every once in a while you get a little build up on your toothpick, just scrape it off of there. And That's good. And then again. Draw your line across there. Okay, for that. So I'll just go over that and get rid of it. So there, we have our feather. Now, what you do now is, I don't have one here, you get a clamp and you clamp that there. First of all, go back through your feather and you look for little areas like that right there where that little clump is and get that out of there. You don't want that there. Just kind of do that. I think that looks pretty good. A little touch up over here. Looks good, I like it. So, I'm going to get me a clamp and I'm going to go set this over on my fireplace. And uh, this will dry this till this, by this afternoon. And uh, the next step will be painting the feather, but we're going to do that when we paint the Indian. So that'll be in the next video series that comes along when I'm painting this Indian. Okay? So anyway, that's how to make a, you know, a good-looking feather without, you know, going overboard on the detail and stuff. Right? Right. That's the way I do it anyway. So until then, when we start working on the painting that Indian, I'll talk to you later. Forgot one thing. Anyway, here's the clamp, clamping my quill, and I'll set that over by the fireplace, and it'll dry real quickly. Now to keep this stuff from getting hard, and it will if you don't take this step, get you a spray bottle and just spray some water down in there, and then put the lid back on and that'll keep it from setting up and drying out until you need to use it again. I don't know when I'm going to carve another Indian, but by the time I do that and thinking about do, making a feather, I know that by doing that spray, this stuff will still be usable, okay? And I won't have to go out and spend whatever it costs now to get a new bottle of this stuff, all right? Now, I'll talk to you later.